Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanna to talk about something that I keep seeing on the internet. Apparently, if you dunk Oreos into chocolate milk instead of white, they don't get as soggy or fall apart as much. Now, why I'm so intrigued by this is the answers that I was reading that are out there, they don't seem to make much sense. So I'm gonna do some of our own experiments and try to figure out one, is there really a difference between white and chocolate milk? And also then, why? Like I said, I got inspiration from a couple of places on the internet. I've watched uh, some other YouTube videos and this Reddit thread that tries to explain why dunking Oreos into chocolate milk doesn't make the cookie so soggy. But why I want to make my own video is because I don't really think the answer they came to is correct. Step one, let me debunk the current answer out there. So what you would see the best answer on that Reddit thread or on different YouTube videos is they say the difference is that chocolate milk that it has emulsifiers in it which seems okay, maybe that's right. Let's look at an ingredient statement for chocolate milk though. Here's a good example, and this is what you would find for most products out there. And looking at this, you can go, okay, yeah, first ingredient is milk, yep, sugar, cocoa, yeah, salt, carrageenan, flavor, vitamins. Well, there's no emulsifiers on this list. There's no emulsifiers in chocolate milk, which would make it pretty hard for that to be the reason that we should dunk our Oreos in chocolate milk instead of white milk, which is exactly why I decided, you know what, I'm going to try this out myself and see what I can come up with. Step two, because you should never trust anything on the internet, I'm going to see for myself if there's really this big difference between dunking an Oreo in chocolate milk versus white milk. Okay, so here's what I got from the store. Oreos, obviously. And then I got white milk and chocolate milk, but the same brand. They're both great value, 1% fat milk. We're ready for our dunk test. So I'm just measuring out one cup chocolate and one cup regular milk. And then I'm gonna toss an Oreo in, I think for probably 30 seconds, but we'll see how it goes. So what, oh, oh I spilled. You know, it wouldn't be a real experiment unless you spill something, so that just makes it more legit. So let's measure out this one cup white milk. Okay, perfect. Let's just move, I just gotta get some of this out of the way because I wanna put the timer in. Perfect, so let's start with 30 seconds and see how this goes. I just gotta set the phone. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Okay, chocolate, white, start timer. All right, counting down from 30 seconds, we're going to see is there really this big difference everyone's been talking about if you dunk an Oreo in chocolate milk. Here, let me try to get you this better view just as the timer's still counting down, but then I wanna be ready to grab these bad boys when the timer goes off. Three, two, one. All right, quick, 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 quick. All right, I'll grab that Oreo in chocolate. There you go. And then quick grab it in the white. Oh, mm, 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 yeah, it's smushy. Look at that. Okay. All right, let me try to get you a better view here. So there definitely is actually a big, oh, big difference. Uh, the one in white milk is really falling apart where, I don't know if you can tell yet, but the one in chocolate, well, looks like all the liquid just went off of it, but like, I think I can snap it in half still. It's like pretty firm. Yeah. Yeah. So very, very different. The one in chocolate milk is stick, like basically still together. So I'm pretty convinced there is something unique about dunking an Oreo in chocolate milk, but I want to do one more experiment to get a couple more hints at what is really happening here or what is unique about this compared to regular milk. Now for this experiment, I'm going to try and determine what's called contact angle. And this is actually a method I used during my PhD when I was doing research. 
obviously I'm in a kitchen. I'm in my sister's kitchen. Shout out to my sister for letting me always use her beautiful kitchen. But I don't have the high tech equipment I, I use during my PhD, right? Like this usually uses really specialized equipment, but I'm going to try and do it as best as I can. Here's a quick rundown on contact angle and don't be worried if you've never heard of it before. I'll, I'll explain everything. So contact angle is a way for us to determine the wetting properties of a liquid when it's in contact with a surface. And this is the perfect like way to do this experiment because we have a liquid, we have white and chocolate milk, and we have a solid, that's our Oreo cookie. So what I'm thinking is if we dispense one drop of the milk on the Oreo, we can measure the contact angle. Now, a big contact angle, that means that the liquid has bad wetting properties or it does not want to be in contact with that solid. So high contact angle is sort of, the liquid wants to de-wet that surface. It does not want to be by that surface. Low contact angle, on the other hand, means that liquid is actually trying to spread out on that surface. The solid and the liquid get along really nicely. It has good wetting properties. So what I'm thinking is maybe we can see a difference in contact angle and therefore wetting properties if we dispense a drop of chocolate and white milk on Oreo cookies. I'm thinking the best way to do this contact angle experiment is actually to do it on the, the inside of the Oreo. So if I break it open, it's still kind of a rough surface. I definitely want to avoid any of that frosting. I want it to just be the cookie, but the, the outside of Oreos are just so rough. And for contact angle, you want it to be as smooth as possible. So I think these insides where the frosting is not, is our best option. You know it's a real experiment if you break those plastic pipettes out, so let's start with white milk. And the plan is I'll just dispense one droplet on that area where there's no frosting on that inside of the Oreo. Okay, that's, that's good. So what you can see here is this is a contact angle that moves over time, which makes sense it's absorbing into the cookie. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna take the contact angle as soon as I dispensed it. And I'll compare that between chocolate milk and regular milk. So here's the image right after I put that drop on the cookie. Let's add some lines for an angle. And you can see this is what I would call a pretty small contact angle. And remember, small contact angle means it has really good wettability. But without anything to compare it to, that really doesn't tell us too much. So let's do the same thing, but with chocolate milk this time. So again, I got my pipette ready to go and just one drop of chocolate milk. So... Huh, okay, well, it's kind of just sitting on top of the cookie where the white milk, you know, did not last this long. I wonder how long this is gonna take. I might have to speed this up depending how long it just sits there for you. Well, it's been three minutes and I'm about tired of watching this, so I don't think that drop of chocolate milk is going to soak into the cookie. But let's go back to that contact angle, which I took right after I put that drop on the cookie. Now, this is interesting to me. Look at how dome-shaped the chocolate milk is. Remember, that is totally different than the white or the regular. So let's put the angle on here and then compare the two. And I think you can see just how different the regular milk versus the chocolate milk, how they're interacting with the cookie very differently. And where is the regular milk that has a really small contact angle, meaning it likes to spread out on that cookie? The chocolate milk has totally different behavior. It's just sort of piling up and has this big contact angle. I feel like these experiments have given me a lot of good things to think about but I want to quick eat some lunch and just mull things over it for a bit. All right, I'm back and I have two main guesses as to why that chocolate milk is not making the Oreo cookie so soggy, or at least as soggy as the white milk. Here's my first hypothesis, and I want us to go back and look at the ingredient statements of chocolate and white milk to see what the difference is, or one of the differences is. 
Now, you'll notice chocolate milk has this ingredient called carrageenan, which is a thickener. And white milk does not have carrageenan. That's because this thickener is only added to help keep those cocoa particles from sinking to the bottom of your carton of milk. So cocoa particles, they're just too big. They wouldn't stay suspended in, in the liquid unless it's thickened by something like carrageenan. What I mean is the, the cocoa particles would actually slowly sink down, down, down until they're just at the bottom of your carton of milk. Like they're not actually gonna make it really chocolatey if they're all on the bottom. So chocolate milk instead has carrageenan to thicken it. But that means, well, chocolate milk is thicker or what I would usually say is more viscous than regular milk. Regular milk is very thin, it's, it's not viscous, it flows very easily. So I'm thinking that maybe this carrageenan has made the milk more viscous, so it is more resistant to flow. And just this different in thickness versus thinness is what slows down the chocolate milk from, you know, absorbing into the cookie. Now, for my second hypothesis, I want to go back and talk about those cocoa particles because obviously chocolate has these cocoa particles, white milk does not. So I'm thinking it's possible these cocoa particles are what's different. Now, I want you to think of this Oreo cookie more like this porous structure of starch and sugars all together. What I think is possible is if by serendipity, these cocoa particles are about or are slightly bigger, bigger than the pores in the cookie, it's possible the cocoa particles are basically acting like a plug and clogging up those pores as the chocolate milk is trying to be absorbed into the cookie. So it's kind of like when you plug your drain in the shower to fill up the bathtub, right? These cocoa particles could essentially be plugging up the pores in the cookie and stopping that chocolate milk from absorbing so quickly and so much into the Oreo cookie. And remember when I did the dunk test and I tried to show you the chocolate milk cookie and all that liquid kind of fell off of it, like it, it had not absorbed into the Oreo, which makes me think maybe something stopped, you know, its ability to actually get into the cookie. And I also was thinking for the contact angle experiments in the beginning, it looks like some of the chocolate milk is being absorbed into the cookie but then it seems to stop and just sort of pool on top of the Oreo, which makes me think maybe as it's trying to absorb some of that chocolate milk, the cocoa particles eventually just clog the pores in the cookie and then the chocolate milk just, you know, lays on top. And those are my two best guesses, at least as of right now. It's probably either due to carrageenan, which is that thickener, or the cocoa particles sort of acting like little plugs and clogging the cookie up. It's also possible both these things are happening at the same time. And if you want to continue this experiment at home, what I'm curious about is if there's a difference when you dunk Oreos in plant-based milks because these tend to also have thickeners. It may be carrageenan, but you also might see gel and gum and locust bean gum because that would sort of push the first hypothesis about just increasing the viscosity using a thickener, in these plant-based milks, they have the thickener, but not the cocoa particles. So that's something to try. And if you do try this, report back in the comments because I'm curious what will happen. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this journey of looking into why Oreos are better off being dunked into chocolate milk. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the description. Otherwise, please subscribe, hit that bell icon, and I will talk to you next time.